بسم الله نبدا uh, this is going to be about abdominal and uh, pelvic trauma um, we'll start as usual with the case so basically you have a 24 year old female post motor vehicle collision comes in with the vital signs as you see them complaining of chest pain abdominal pain and pelvic pain so we received this patient and this handover from EMS at the bedside how would you manage this patient primary survey okay prepare alert the teams make sure the blood bank knows make sure radiology department knows and then um, primary survey okay good so we'll come back to this later on uh, anatomy in the in the abdomen is we have to know what's the anterior abdomen what's the flank and what's the back so you can see them it's very clearly uh, delineated in the images in front of you uh, anterior abdomen flank which is typically the side and then the back. Um, now, this just helps you out in terms of identifying uh, anatomically where some of the uh, injured organs may be uh, based on the um, uh, area that you see injured on the outside, on the patient's body on the outside, okay? Bismillah. Types of injuries. So what are some of the types of injuries that we have with the uh, abdominal and or pelvic trauma? A blunt, penetrating, and blast injuries. This can obviously, these injuries can happen with any of the organ systems, uh, but it's um, because the abdomen is a large area and harbors a lot of uh, uh, important organs, uh, we'll talk about them in a little bit more detail here. So blunt. Uh, the most common injured uh, uh, organ in and liver. Yeah. Spleen and li uh, liver. Spleen and liver. Yes. So the spleen is the most commonly injured uh, organ in blunt abdominal trauma, followed by liver and then the small bowel. Um, there's a 15% incidence of a retroperitoneal hematoma, just for your information. طيب, in terms of penetrating injuries, um, we have stab wounds, which involves the liver. So blunt, وشكلنا? blunt is the spleen. Spleen is the most common. In stab wounds, stab penetrating wounds, liver is the most common, followed by the small bowel, followed by the diaphragm, followed by the colon. Okay, gunshot wounds, what's the most common? Small bowel. Wab hakida. Blunt trauma, spleen, stab, liver, gunshot wound, small bowel. How the most common ones? Tamam. Okay. Tayyib, blast. Blast has uh, basically uh, multiple uh, uh, types of injuries together. So you have being thrown. So if you're thrown away from a blast, then you can get blunt trauma. If you have fragments thrown at you, then you can have blunt trauma, or if they're sharp objects, then you can have penetrating trauma, such as uh, shrapnel. Uh, blast pressure it typically affects the tympanic membrane, the lungs, and the bowel. Okay, primary survey. So this is, this is in, in, in C, where we uh سؤال الحين لما حطيت انا في السكرين شيرنج طالع المحاضره لكم صح انا حطيت الجروب تشات حقتنا في وسط السكرين طلعت لكم ولا لا اوكي ممتاز كويس عشان اخليها هنا واقدر اشوف انا طيب ف بيسكلي البرايمري سيرفي حقتنا as we said airway and c spine breathing and ventilation and then we go to c so c which is circulation is where we check for the abdominal distension if there's any abdominal tenderness if there's any uh, bruising we check for pelvic stability which can tell us if there is any uh, 
um, uh, pelvic fractures. We check for long, long bone fractures, any lacerations, uh, especially large ones with active bleeding, such as scalp, uh, long bones, such as the, uh, the soldier with the wounded uh, right lower extremity, uh, things that we need to deal with because they may lead to, on, uh, to hemodynamic uh, instability with ongoing bleeding. So this is where we actually identify them. خليني أقول لكم أنا وش كنا نسوي مثلاً بال trauma code uh, where where I trained, um, where I did my residency and I did my uh, my uh, trauma fellowship. Uh, what do we do? Um, we have obviously multiple members of the team present. Uh, uh, anesthesia holds airway. Uh, anesthesia and or emergency department holds the uh, breathing. And then general surgery and ortho both do see how do they do them. General surgery takes care of the abdomen. Ortho checks the long bones for fractures, checks the pelvis and checks the distal pulses. And it all happens at the same time. Basically what we do is as the trauma team leader, I say A, and then the anesthesia talks. I say B, and then anesthesia or the emergency uh, resident talks. I say C. And then I start with the abdomen and then they tell me uh, what, what their assessment is. And we can do it immediately. So basically everyone's checking, but no one talks until we actually, we actually mention them to talk. So we, things can happen simultaneously and we can get things done quicker. Uh, all it needs is just basically one uh, that you have uh, multiple training uh, uh, sessions on how to do this as a team. And two is, is uh, that you have the adequate number of people in the emergency department, but you can still do it with just yourself and a nurse. Um, now, again, back to C. So C is where we check for abdominal distension, abdominal tenderness, pelvic instability, long bone fractures, any lacerations with ongoing bleeding. We make sure that the blood pressure is okay, the heart rate's okay. These will all give us indicators if there's any ongoing bleeding. Um, now, a fast exam is done during the primary survey. صح? Typically, we don't do it with C. We do it after the primary survey. But let's say for, for discussion's sake right now that we did a fast exam. What do we do with the findings? How does the fast exam change, change my management? لا تجاوبون كلكم مرة واحدة تكفون حبستوني <تصفيق> طيب طيب الـ الـ والله ما يعجبني الاونلاين برزنتيشنز لان اي كانت بيك اون يو جايز لكن It is all about time matters يا yeah, دكتور طيب واتس واتس اباوت لايك اهيمو بروتينيوم بروبلي اي نيد تو جو تو ذا او ار ممتاز سو so بيسكلي what we're going to do is we're going to assess the patient. So let's say the patient is hypotensive. We're resuscitating the patient. And then immediately after the primary survey, we do a fast and the fast shows positive fluid in the right upper quadrant. How does this change my management? Instead of taking the patient to the CT scanner after the primary survey and after initiating the resuscitation, I'm going to take this patient to the OR because the patient's in shock. Airway and breathing are secure, obviously, because I'm already in C and the patient's hypotensive. And then the patient has, after the primary survey, a positive um, ultrasound, uh, fast exam for free fluid in the, in the abdomen. So that's how it changes. Let's say the patient's hypotensive, I've initiated resuscitation, but the patient has a negative ultrasound. Does that exclude injury? No, because it could be a retroperitoneal uh, bleeding from a pelvic fracture that we can't see very well on a, um, on a fast exam. So the patient at least goes to the CT and then we can have a clear image about what's going on, where the bleeding's coming from, if, it, if there's any source of bleeding, if there are any fractures, so on and so forth. So that's how the fast exam changes, changes where the patient goes, whether to the CT or the OR. Uh, remember this point very, 
very closely. I, th- I think it's important for you and it may be important for other things. Wink, wink. El uh, Next. طبعا تكلمنا عن اللي هو airway breathing وبعدين um, circulation خلاص uh, disability and then exposure uh, what happens in the secondary survey with these patients so special consideration in t- to the abdomen because that's where we think that the majority of the trauma is, especially in abdominal pelvic injuries or isolated traumas. Um, We want to make sure that we know that significant bleeding can happen from pelvic fractures and frequent manipulation of the pelvis can lead to what? Okay, so let's say the patient has a pelvic fracture with bleeding, uh, an injured vessel. How how do we how do we uh, alter this by frequent manipulation of the pelvis? So if the pelvis has a hematoma or the pelvis has uh, clots, then we can actually, with frequent manipulation, manipulation, dislodge one of these clots and then lead to re-bleeding. So if we suspect the pelvic fracture, all we check is for instability, and then we get the imaging, and we don't move these patients very much. And then we'll talk about them in the pelvic uh, portion, but if the patient has an open book, let's say, uh, fracture or an unstable pelvic fracture that requires binding, then once we bind, we stop. We don't manipulate the pelvis too much because, like I said, we can worsen the bleeding through dislodging the clots. And then we have to know that there is basically uh, anterior versus posterior in terms of uh, uh, fractures and in terms of areas of injury. So we can actually add contrast studies as needed. So if we have an anterior injury where we suspect that there's going to be a, a urethral injury or a bladder injury, then we add urethrograms, cystograms, uh, uh, um, pyelography as needed. Okay. So these are the areas that we want to focus on for uh, examination in the secondary survey, if not picked up on the primary survey in patients with major abdominal pelvic trauma. By indications for laparotomy, there are penetrating trauma injuries and there are blunt trauma injuries, such as that with the, with the thoracotomy. So penetrating injuries, if you have an unstable patient, evisceration, meaning that the actual uh, bowel components are coming out, peritoneal signs, diaphragmatic injury, GI bleeding, impaled object, meaning the patient came in with a stab to the abdomen and the knife is still still there. That's an impaled object. If the patient came after a blast and the patient has a, a piece of shrapnel uh, in, their, uh, in their abdomen, it's still stuck there. Intraperitoneal air is another one. Now, these are the indications for a laparotomy in a penetrating injury. For blunt, if the patient's unstable with a strongly suspected intraabdominal injury, if the patient has pneumoperitoneum, if the patient has diaphragmatic injury, GI bleed, or unequivocal peritoneal irritation. These are all indications for laparotomy in a blunt trauma patient, abdominal trauma patient. Bye. Back to the case. So this patient's 24 years old, MVC. She came in with a heart rate of 110, blood pressure of 105 over 80, respiratory rate 18, uh, sets 100%, and the GCS is 15. We said, mentioned at the beginning of this uh, lecture that she's complaining of chest pain, abdominal pain, and pelvic pain. So what do you want to do? I know you wanted to do the pro, basically the uh, primary survey. So let's just say this, you want to make sure that you have your PPE on, personal protective equipment. Uh, you want to get more information about how the motor vehicle collision happened itself. So you, if this is a patient that is brought to you by EMS, uh, and there's no other um, um, relative or friend or someone involved in the accident with them, then you want to know what the, what the accident 
uh, mechanism was. So EMS tells you that this is a rollover, unbelted. She was ejected approximately 20 meters and she was going approximately 70 kilometers an hour. There are no other injured. لا يا عبد العزيز الله يرحم والديك مو بجست اكس راي الحين اصبر تجي تمام history they tell you that she had no loss of consciousness she's complaining of nausea no vomiting no visual changes no neck pain no focal neurological deficits and she's ambulatory at scene these are all important things for you to know when you're actually discussing the mechanism with the patient. So what do you want to do? You want to do a primary survey, صح? Primary survey. So A, she's speaking clearly. You put a C collar on, breathing. Her respiratory rate is 18. She has no evidence of external thoracic trauma and her saturation is 100% on room air. So if she's speaking clearly and she's breathing fine, saturation's fine, respiratory rate's fine, with no evidence of external thoracic trauma, we've cleared A and B and we've put a C-spine collar on. So A and C and then A and uh, C-spine and then B are clear. So now we go to the C portion. So she's complaining of chest pain, abdominal pain and pelvic pain. Chest pain, we've already cleared from airway and breathing. What's wrong with C? Ma'ahahi. In this patient, what's wrong with C? Internal hemorrhage. How how do you know? By fast or? We're going through the primary survey. Let's let's all remember that we have to go through primary survey. We've done we're done with A, we're done with B, C. We don't do fast now. Fast is an adjunct to the primary survey, meaning once you're done with the primary survey, you can do a fast, you can do the x-rays, you can do a hadha. So you have to make sure that you remember. This is why I keep repeating these cases and I ask you what you want to do. Because you have to make sure that you go through a stepwise approach. You can't jump back and forth. You can't move from one to the other until you actually go uh, and secure the first. So we've secured A and B, now we're in C. Yes, thank you. هذا وائل يقول لكم أن increased heart rate. The blood pressure is a little bit on the lower side, but it's still within normal. So increased heart rate tells me in a patient that's been involved in a significant mechanism, um, motor vehicle collision, complaining of abdominal and pelvic pain, that there may be, like you said, that ظاهر أن أحمد اللي كنت تتكلم توب المايك, الظاهر أن يعني أن there may be an internal uh, internal uh, hemorrhage. Yes. I agree. There may be an internal hemorrhage, but you have to use the signs to tell me why and how you're going to work this out. So basically, the patient has tachycardia, heart rate of 110, complains of abdominal pain and pelvic pain. You examine the abdomen, you just examine. So she has a tender abdomen, and in the left upper quadrant, that's the main area of tenderness, mild overlying bruising, has no rebound, no pelvic instability when you check the pelvis, no evidence of lacerations or long bone fractures, and the distal pulse is intact. This is for the C portion. So what do you want to do at this point? As he has a pelvic pain, it will do a stability D. We'll go for D. Ma fahamt. We will carry on on the primary survey. Mumtaz, we'll carry on. But what, what's the abnormality here? We've mentioned that she has an abnormal heart rate, so that may give us an indication that she actually has some bleeding going on. Sorry. So at least, at least, to do something to, st- to help with this abnormality, the initial resuscitation measure is to at least start fluids. Sorry. So according to ATLS guidelines, you give no more than one liter, one liter of fluids. So we can start the fluids now. 
you can give a bolus of fluids and continue. Taib, you went to D. Her GCS is 15, pupils are equal. You've secured D, you went to E. She's completely exposed. There's no evidence of external injury other than the ones mentioned in C, which is the uh, overlying bruising in the left upper quadrant with the tenderness. Okay, she's warmed with blankets. What do you want to do next? Bleeding control, Martez. Low can, low can a patient has any external signs of bleeding. We've mentioned she doesn't have any external signs of bleeding. Walakin, we can use what you said to say that the patient has tachycardia, has abdominal pain, has, has um, uh, left upper quadrant bruising and tenderness. Uh, we suspect that she has an intra-abdominal injury with the tachycardia that leading to bleeding. So we actually give her so, uh, some fluids. Uh, we don't do a CBC now, but if you're going to insert an IV line to give fluids, you might as well, you may as well uh, get the uh, uh, fluids, uh, the, uh, sorry, the labs and then send them. So you can get the CBC, but yes, it's not a, it's not a priority now. Now we are actually getting it was the adjuncts, the fast and. Okay, so we want to do the primary survey adjuncts. Mumtaz. So we did the chest x ray. She doesn't have any neck pain, so, and you've decided just to keep her in a C collar now, so not do any, um, any chest x ray. This is the pelvic x ray. So these are all adjuncts to the primary survey. This is her heart. No fluid, all good. Right upper quadrant. So you can see that this is the liver as mentioned. This is the kidney. This is the interface. And obviously, you have to go through all the interface, superior and inferior. You have to make sure that you cover everything. Uh, but this is just the stat image to tell you that there's nothing. Okay. And then you go to the left upper quadrant. What's going on? So you can see that the patient has free fluid. So this is the interface. The interface is what's between the spleen and the kidney. This is the diaphragm. This is fluid just around the spleen now. So you have left upper quadrant fluid present. So this tells you that the patient has, like you suspected early on, an abdominal injury with free fluid in the abdomen and tachycardia. We've started fluids, but she has a positive fast now. And this is the last image of the fast. So bladder image, which shows a full bladder, but she's She's, uh, she's fine in terms of no free fluid. So what's next? You send for the, um, you send for the labs. What's an important thing that you have to send for this woman? Pregnancy testing. Shukran. Yes, any woman of childbearing age, regardless of sexual activity in a trauma case, especially if they're unconscious, you have to send for a pregnancy test. Good. So now what do we do? Khalas, we've done a primary survey. What do we want to do? Zayma Ginna, the patient's stable, technically stable. She's not hypotensive, so she's not in shock. You've started the fluids. You can give up to one liter and then give blood. You've sent for the labs, including a pregnancy test. Tamam, she has a positive fast, but she's stable. Before the secondary survey, what do you do? If the patient has a positive fast, as an unstable, goes to the OR. The patient is not hypotensive. The patient can go to the CT 
to delineate the injury pattern. So we can have a detailed injury pattern so they can go to the OR afterwards. But yes, CT, then secondary survey, then the patient will pop probably go to the OR. Is this clear so far? I really want you guys to understand because these are very important things to understand for, for life in general. As a physician, you need to know these things regardless of what your specialty is because hatta and a specialty, you're probably going to do a rotation in the emergency department. These are very basic bread and butter things for the emergency department that you need to know. If you have any questions, just, just ask. Uh, okay. I'm go going to take your quietness that this is clear. We'll move on to the next case. So you have a 68 year old male who fell from a roof, has the vital signs as seen in front of you. Um, what do you want to do? I need someone to tell me in detail what they want to do not by uh, typing, but by actually unmuting themselves and talking to me, talking to us all. So tell me. Anyone? Uh, doctor, we start uh, the primary survey. Okay. A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So Which tell me what of the airway. I let me uh, basin step by step. Push. So, so uh, the patient. Hey. بالنسبة للأيروي نشيك هل هو يقدر يتكلم هل فيه إشكالية أو شيء ولا لا؟ so primary survey patient is speaking clearly. okay. ال بالنسبة لل B breathing great. لا ننسى شيء في الأيروي. A is not secure ليش؟ not secure. A A is not secure ليش؟ ما أقدر أنتقل من A ل B ليش؟ Falling. طيب. Patient is speaking clearly. If A is clear, but A is not clear. ليش؟ C spine. لا تنسونها. Okay. A. فخلاص. أنت الحين patient is speaking clearly. Patient has a C color on. You've moved to B. So what do you want to check in B? Uh, respiratory rate. ممتاز. Respiratory rate is 18. It's uh, normal, doctor. ممتاز. البريت normal عنده. A circulation. We check B just by respiratory rate. Uh, and SpO2. طيب. Respiratory rate is 18 and SpO2 is 100% on room air. Mm. That's it? That's it, doctor. أفا وين اللي قلنا primary survey you have to check for external signs of thoracic trauma و auscultation و tracheal deviation والأشياء هذه كلها فهذه you have to mention this. this is why I keep repeating this I don't want you to move from one to the next until you actually have a clear understanding that you've secured it ف A speaking clearly C colors in place B we have the respiratory rate of 18. We have an SpO2 of 100% on room air. You've done your assessment. There's no evidence mm. of external thoracic trauma. Okay. What do you want to do now? Uh, circulation. Okay. What do you want to do in circulation? Uh, check the heart rate. If we okay. have tachycardia. Uh, he has heart rate is 136. 
BP is one uh, is 87 uh, over 30. Okay, so he has tachycardia and hypertension. Uh, hypotension. What else? Maybe he have a fracture. Tell me, how do you assess C? Where the heart rate or blood pressure? Tell me. I want to give you the Tell me what you want to check. في البلس يا دكتور نشوف البلسنج اذا عنده مشاكل لانه فول فول موف نشيك على البلسنج تحت ممتاز so no evidence, no evidence of lacerations or long bone fractures distal pulses are intact mm. Mm. what else do you guys check in feet ممكن بليدنج دكتور بعد اذا في بليدنج اوكي اني اكسترنال ساينز اوف بليدنج نو اكسترنال ساينز اوف بليدنج وات ايلس وات دو يو تشيك اند سي ساينز اوف انترنال بليدنج اف يو هاف ا تروما او اذا في كدمه يا دكتور او شيء يكون في انترنال بليدنج هاو هاو دو يو تشيك سو اف يو ار تشيكينج وير اند سي بالضبط مو قلنا we have to check heart rate, blood pressure, long bone fractures, signs of external bleeding, distal pulses, will abdomen. So the patient on examination of the abdomen has a tender lower abdomen with overlying bruising. What do you want to do now? We go for D, doctor. قبلها وش سويت بالمشكلة اللي عندك؟ نحاول uh, اذا في بليدنج ستوب ذا بليدنج اوكي ما في بليدنج زي بس عنده تندر لور ابدومن وذ مايلد اوفر لاين بروزنج هاز جاردنج تو ذا ابدومن هاز تاك كارديا اند هايبوتنشن فلويد ممتاز وي ستارت فلويدز طيب ناو يو موف تو دي ذا بيبل بيبلز ار ايكوال اند جي سي اس از 15 ذا بيشنت Yes, now goes to E. The patient's completely exposed, no evidence of injury other than the ones mentioned, and he's warmed with blankets. What do you want to do next? You want to do the adjuncts to the primary survey, so the x rays, and then we go to the um, uh, CT, okay. CT if needed and fast. So this is the, uh, the uh, chest x ray, which, just to let you guys know, is, is fine. And then we go to the pelvic X-ray. Have the pelvic X-ray. Any abnormalities? No. There is no hip fracture. Had the hip normal or had the hip normal? What's 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 going on? And the open book fracture. No, it's not normal, yeah, Sheikh Abdul Aziz. This is not normal at all. Fi عندك هنا an open book fracture. Fi عندك هنا separation, diastasis. تمام. For these can tell you just in comparison. واحد أن the symphysis pubis عندك. He has space, so it's an open book fracture. The patient's hypotensive, and the patient's tachycardic, and the patient has pain in the lower abdomen, and then has this on the x-ray. What do you want to do? You want to actually bind the patient, so you put the pelvic binder. Okay, we'll continue now with the case. So you do the uh, fast exam. This is the heart. No evidence of pericardial tamponade. This is the right upper quadrant, liver, kidney, Interface, no bleeding. Left upper quadrant, interface, kidney, spleen, no bleeding. Bladder shows you in this patient that has a normal bladder, but has some fluid here that looks abnormal. And this is actually clotted blood. Okay. So at this time, the nurse tells you that this patient's heart rate is 147 and his BP is 67 over 38. What would you do? Knowing the information that you know now, where should the patient go? 
يا اخوان شكرا او ار بوزيتيف فاست وشوك وعنده انديكيتر فور لابراتوميا يس جوست تو ذا او ار ممتاز طيب pelvis injuries pelvis injuries they require significant force just so you know uh, what's what's important about them is that they have associated injuries most of the time um, massive bleeding can happen due to venous versus arterial uh, now we need to know that the venous can be a l- more serious than the arterial because it has a continuous bleed where the arteries can actually retract and slow down the bleeding. Exam findings, you can have a lot of exam findings um, basically that show pelvis injury. So you can have bruising, lacerations, exposed bones, limb length discrepancy, which is what I showed you earlier in the patient who had the blue cast on his right uh, lower extremity. So it was shortened, it was internally rotated. Um, you can have external rotation, uh, pelvic instability on examination during uh, the C portion of the primary survey. You can have urethral injuries, in the secondary to a, um, a pelvic fracture. You can have rectal bleeding if it's a posterior pelvic fracture. You can have uh, uh, multiple uh, signs that tell you that this is this is a pelvic fracture. So mechanism. anterior posterior compression lateral compression or vertical shear there as the names so ap is meaning from anterior to posterior posterior to anterior compression yani kanak wahed maska min aljamb qaad tadghat min wara wa min qaddam lateral compression meaning is from the side you get hit from the sides and you have compression vertical shear is meaning uh, the best example for this is if you fall down from a height and then you fall on one leg before the other so the majority of the force falls on one leg so the whole let's say you fall on your right leg straight then the whole shear force goes from the foot all the way to the pelvis on the right side because you felt on you fell on your uh, left leg uh, right leg combined mechanisms which can imbi- combine multiple uh, uh, mechanisms of the ones mentioned uh, common pelvis injuries just for examples uh we have uh uh what's this what's this called It's not a hip, a hip here. Open book, or is it open box? This open book, yes, fee open book. But I can have the iliac wing, and this is where the fracture is. So this is one of the common injuries. What's this? So this is the symphysis pubis, sir. Huh? And then we have superior, inferior pubic rami. This is an inferior pubic ramus fracture. What's this? Also pubic rami, but this is a sad, straddle fracture because it involves all four. Okay. What's this? This is a sacroiliac joint fracture. So this is the SI joint. This is a fracture, and then this is the second. component which is the open book so management a b as usual um, but specific for pelvis injuries and abdominal injuries you want to make sure that you have control of the hemorrhage so how do you control the hemorrhage you have to wrap or put on a binder you have to rule out any abdominal injuries uh, angiography if there is a bleeding uh, bleeding vessel that requires angio uh fixation so if the patient has multiple fractures that requires operative fixation by orthopedics uh pelvic packing sometimes is uh, one method to uh, to stop the bleeding so you actually uh 
uh, have a laparotomy and then you put in packing because you can't localize the bleeding. Um, the packing stops it through basically pressure, stops the bleeding through pressure. And this is how you put the pelvic binder on. It's either with a bed sheet or some specific binders itself. The area that you want is the greater trochanters, so on the femurs itself. So if you're using a sheet, this is the main area you want to focus on where the GTs are, okay? Conclusion, always have a high index of suspicion for abdominal and pelvic injuries. Uh, abdominal pelvic injuries are still a leading preventable cause of death in trauma, trauma patients. Any questions about this one? One, two, three. Okay. المحاضرة اللي بعدها اللي هي الهد والسباين uh, It's almost as long as this one So even if we start at uh, 11 We should be okay to finish on time so